Sports. Now to shift gears and be joined by Kevin Green for a developing story. We are looking at all things NVIDIA. So Kevin, thank you so much for being here today. There's so many headlines on NVIDIA that we see news. They're potentially looking to outsource their chips to Intel. Also, I saw a report opening this production center in Vietnam. Walk us through what's, of course, driving NVIDIA shares. Yeah, well, we are seeing the shares down on the session, which is actually surprising because if you look at the broader uh, SOX or the semiconductor ET, or semiconductor um, index, you actually see that up about 3.5% here. But we are seeing NVIDIA CEO continuing to express interest in having a third foundry, which could actually be Intel at this point in time, which is why we are also seeing Intel shares move to the upside here. Because of this fact, we are also seeing cities uh, putting NVIDIA on its 30-day positive catalyst Watch. And they also continue to discuss the fact that the GPU market in itself continues to see a rapid demand, and they believe that that's going to continue in 2024, especially when it comes to ramping up NVIDIA's H200 and B100 GPUs overall. They continue to keep a buy rating on the shares, and they also have a price target, target of $575. And Jenny, there's one thing to just note here. There's not a lot of foundries that can actually provide some of these high production type of chips or high quality chips. So Intel does make uh, a little bit of sense here, especially if you're looking at it from a geographic uh, standpoint, you'll be able to diversify your production process. And that could be a windfall for them here in the near term as well as the long term. Kev, uh, I see this is all ahead of what this CES event as well, or CES meeting and following, I guess, what Citi's describing as recent underperformance of shares. I mean, how recent are they saying? I mean, NVIDIA is the, <laughs> the pace setter of markets this year. Yeah, I, you know, I, la I laughed at that as well when it came to this note. I mean, we did see a little bit of a pullback, but if you're looking at it from a technical standpoint, it's still in a bullish uptrend. Seeing these pullbacks are not that surprising, especially when it's able to hold the gap higher than it had uh, a couple of uh, a couple of months ago. So I think overall it's still in a good trend. Uh, but once again, you're kind of talking about the CES uh, meeting and things of that nature here. I mean, we continue to get a lot of new information when it comes to the chips that uh, NVIDIA has been able to churn out here. Now, with it's able to be able to provide some of the uh, lower quality chips, if you will, to China without the uh, United States government putting any type of restri uh, restrictions or sanctions on those particular products. I think that's going to be a tailwind for the company here in the future. I think that's why we probably have seen a little bit of hes hesitation when it comes to this name uh, over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I, I know the shares are down today, Kevin, but down by about 1.8 per, even today, it doesn't even feel like we make significant strides to the downside. It's like we see one down day and then that's followed by several up days. I mean, it feels like the news just keeps coming for NVIDIA shares. So what are you watching now into the back half? I mean, the end of this year, we only have, I think it's about like 20 days left in this this year as far as 2023 goes. What are some kind of other than CSS that you're sort of keeping on your radar? Because you are far more advanced in the world of all things AI than myself. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, I think the uh, big thing next year, obviously, is going to continue to be hardware, but I do believe that believe that there's going to be a little bit of a software type of narrative going into the latter half of next year. And the reason being is because at the end of the day, when we have these new chips that hit the market, the refresh cycle is just going to be way too much when it comes to a lot of these companies, especially these hyperscalers uh, that are purchasing up these chips. If they just bought the H100s, now are they going to take those chips out and buy the H200s? Usually, we don't see that type of refresh cycle uh, occurring here. So I think it's going to really be on the software side, the developers themselves, to be able to improve these models, especially when you're trying to train them, uh, to get the most use out of the current technology that these uh, hyperscalers currently have right now. I think that's going to be the start. Uh, that's a, that's going to be the story in the latter half of next year. Hardware is always going to be nice, but software definitely provides a lot more margins for these companies and definitely a lot more scale uh, if you're looking at these models uh, moving forward. Magnificent Seven, not the place to be today. All seven names in red territory. NVIDIA, one of them, but off the floor here a little bit intraday on the heels of this note from City. Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Schwab Network. Appreciate the update. CES is taking place Jan 9th through 12th in Vegas, so we'll have that uh, to kick off next year.